Valerie Amos, Baroness Amos. I'm currently Director, SOAS, University of London. Excellent. Are you also one of the most famous Guyanese women in the UK? Tell us why. Well, if you say so, yes, I Juliet. Do. Uh, I have been uh, a member of the British Cabinet. In fact, I was the first uh, black woman uh, in a British uh, Cabinet. I've been a senior official at the United Nations. I've represented Britain as uh, High Commissioner to Australia. Uh, so I've had a rather varied and interesting career. When you say interesting, is it something that you lie awake at night and think, bloody hell? No, not, not at all. And I don't think um, that anybody who uh, is seen as being successful really does that. I mean, I'm someone who um, I feel very strongly that I've taken opportunities that have been presented to me. I've had a lot of people that have supported me and looked out for me uh, along the way. And my focus always is on what I'm doing and how I can uh, do the best I can in the job uh, that I'm in. And um, I think that it's really hard uh, sometimes to actually appreciate and understand the extent to which uh, people feel that I have achieved uh, so much because I feel just like the Valerie Amos that left Guyana when she was nine and arrived in the UK. I feel like a regular person and I hope I am. I think we know you are. Tell us a little bit about Valerie Amos in Guyana. What, what was life like for you? Where, where did you grow up? I grew up in uh, Wakenham, a tiny island in the mouth of the Essequibo uh, River. So I'm a real country girl. And it was, it was one of those magical childhoods that, um, that you think about when you look back on your childhood. It always seems very magical and wonderful. Um, of course, there were lots of uh, bits that weren't so uh, magical in the sense that um, we were very much a community, so the children grew up in that community atmosphere. Um, so it meant that every single adult felt that they had the right um, not just to tell the, your parents about you, but to chastise you if they found you doing anything uh, wrong. So, uh, but there was the love um, as well as the discipline. And Guyana is so extraordinarily beautiful. And of course, that's something that I really only discovered and understood uh, when I went back as an adult. But, you know, as a child, having the freedom uh, to roam, um, my parents were both teachers and my uh, mother used to teach me. And anybody who had a mother teach them in Guyana knows that that is not easy. <laughs> um, so that bit wasn't uh, easy. Uh, but. Um, I'm, a, I'm very academically minded, so that bit was okay, although not the parts when um, she wanted to find out why you hadn't come top in class. So was there a lot of pressure as you were growing up? Um, there was pressure, but I don't think I felt it as pressure. I felt it as um, wanting us to, to be successful. I felt it was very much about building our confidence. Um, about expectations being high, but not in a negative way, a kind of sense that you could do anything you wanted if you uh, uh, stuck to education, did the best that you could, got the qualifications, um, and then went out into the world. Now, I know that um, you've been involved, and I'll talk a bit about that in a moment, with the Amos bursary. Yes. <coughs> yes um, actually, no, let's talk about it now, because some of you here may not know about it. And that was, as we were talking about your parents, that was something that you basically took on because in memory of your parents who were educators. Yes, they were both educators. They died very close to each other in uh, 2008. In fact, uh, nine days apart. Um, I still find it hard to talk about. So if I break down, um, forgive me. My mother died on the morning of my dad's uh, funeral. Literally, we were preparing for his funeral and uh, she passed away and we were trying to think afterward. I mean, it was traumatic for us. Um, it was what they would have wanted. They were so close, uh, but we're a very close knit family. So it was really, really hard. And then we were trying to think about, but well, what could we do in their memory? And we said uh, to friends and family, uh, forget about the, the, the flowers. We're not quite so sure 
what we're going to do, but we will do something. Um, education's always been important in, in our family. So on my mother's side, um, my grandfather uh, was a headmaster. Um, my father was uh, a teacher and remained a teacher uh, here in the UK up on, uh, until the time that he retired. Uh, my sister started her life as uh, a teacher. My nephew is currently a teacher. Uh, so uh, education is very, very important in our family. And uh, we did what um, our parents, particularly my father, had always taught us to do, which was to look at the data, um, look at the evidence. And uh, we saw when we looked at the data that uh, young black men of African Caribbean heritage even if they had the ability to get to university, um, very often uh, fell away during that first year. Um, and in fact, they had the highest dropout rates. And we kind of had some ideas about why that was. Uh, so the Amos Bursary was formed, and it's very much about supporting young black men of African Caribbean uh, heritage um, it's about aspiration, it's about uh, giving back, it's about giving them the skills to succeed at university and uh, beyond. We started with uh, seven um, uh, young men and we now have 90-something and they are wonderful. We've had um, uh, students at Cambridge, at Oxford, at uh, UCL. We have managed to uh, get scholarships, they get mentoring. Uh, they get international experiences, including in uh, New York, Belize, the Gambia, and elsewhere, and it's really grown. Uh, the moving force behind all of this is my sister, who is here in uh, the room, trying to hide away. Uh, and of course, it's very much, it feels like a family charity. Um, it's full of volunteers, um, and I think that family atmosphere uh, really helps the young men and we've just had our Beyond Outstanding uh, weekend conference which we do uh, once a year and to see the young men stand up and talk about you know what they've achieved and how they've done it and you know they come um, from some pretty difficult uh, backgrounds uh, sometimes and we had uh, one young man who managed to get a place at Harvard but had to raise a lot of money, £70,000 for that year, and he managed to do it. Um, so he'll be going to Harvard for a year, so I'm incredibly uh, proud of him. And Jaladi, who's filming right here, is uh, uh, an Amos Bursary uh, student and uh, is giving back, um, you know, having uh, been one of our very successful students. From Hackney, I'm Jaladi, just saying. Now, it, it's something that we're all very proud of. The number of people in the room um, work and volunteer with Amos Bursary and support, including myself. Um, so, the idyllic childhood in Guyana? Well, I mean, idyllic in the sense that you look back and it's idyllic. I mean, it's like any uh, childhood. Um, you know, good bits, uh, not so good bits. But I do think that, um, you know, I worry about what's happened uh, if you're having to bring up uh, children in uh, London uh, where we are worried about safety, we're worried about you know security, we're worried about uh, uh, drugs, uh, alcohol, uh, the internet, you know a whole range of things that, that young people now have to uh, go through and of course we had challenges but not nearly I think uh, to that extent and also to be in a society that doesn't necessarily accept you even after all of this uh, time, um, I think it brings additional pressures and burdens. So in that sense, you know, I look back and I think that the foundation that we got uh, in Guyana was so important um, uh, for us and it's really stood me in very good stead. Talking about coming here, we, we've all heard about the strains and the emotional pressure that um, Diane Abbott has been under. I mean, what about yourself? What, what, what is it? Who do you turn to? How do you get through the day? It must be even worse for you, to be quite honest. Well, it is hard um, sometimes, but I, I've had a huge amount of support. I mean, my family is very, very important uh, to me and keep 
Um, and what they do is keep your feet very firmly on the ground. So I remember my uh, niece once saying, you may be Baroness Amos, but you're my auntie. <laughs> Um, and that, you know, that sense that you're part of a family, um, you know, a family that, you know, teases you, loves you, um, you know, makes sure that you don't get too big for your boots. I mean, all of that is wonderful. And I have a wonderful uh, group of friends who uh, do the same thing. So that sense of, of security um, and love is very important to me. But I also have a huge amount of support. I mean... Uh, you know, people will write to me, will email me, will see me in the street and tell me how proud they are uh, of me. And, um, you know, it's wonderful. You choke up a bit too. Well, what is it about the, we, we keep hearing about this Guyanese mafia, someone mentioned it, <laughs> and everyone giggles at it, but we, we sort of um, instinctively think, yeah, it's true. What do you think? Well, the, the phrase was coined by Prince Charles, who is very proud to own it, um, I have to say. And it was at a time when um, you had me in the House of Lords, you had David Lammy in uh, Parliament, uh, his own uh, head of communications, Colleen Harris, uh, Trevor Phillips. Um, so there was a sense, uh, and also because Guyana is not that well known. Um, so people kept saying, well, who are these people from Guyana? Where have they where have they come from? And so he coined this phrase, the, the, the Guyanese Mafia. And what do you think it means? I think for him it meant that uh, there were a group of people who were exercising a degree of uh, influence who happened to have roots in a particular place. And more educated than others? Uh, I don't think that he was necessarily thinking about it in that sense in terms of education. I think he was thinking about it in terms of uh, people in pos certain positions in uh, Britain who were born in Guyana or had links to Guyana. I think that's how he was thinking about it. So very much about influence. And what about you yourself? Do, do you think of yourself as Guyanese? Do you think of yourself as British? All of those. I think of myself as Guyanese, very much so. I think about myself as British. I mean, I've been here since I was nine years old. Uh, but I also think of myself as Caribbean in terms of culture. Uh, and I also think about myself as African. And um, I kind of value all of those elements of who I am and what I'm about.